I'm John Cannon, and the name of my book is Environment in the Balance, the Green Movement and the Supreme Court. I started with 150 significant environmental decisions by the Supreme Court beginning in 1970 through the present. And I winnowed those decisions down to 30 that I thought were the most significant for my purposes, and then proceeded to a very close examination, excruciatingly close, some might say, of each of those 30 decisions in the course of the book. What the book shows is there are some deep uh, divisions between and among the justices in these environmental cases. And I attribute these deep divisions not only to um, differences on the law in the technical sense, but also to differences in the beliefs and values that the justices bring to these decisions. What's interesting to me about these opinions is that they, they show a certain response of an important deliberative institution to the beliefs and values of the environmental movement. The environmental movement is currently stalemated in the sense that it's made some progress. It's enabled the enactment of important environmental laws which have uh, produced a lot of benefits in terms of environmental protection, but it's proved to be insufficiently powerful to move the needle on important issues that are pending like climate change or widespread biodiversity loss and other issues. So the question for me is, well, why is that stalemate occurring in a movement that started out so powerfully in the 1970s? And if we can answer that question, what would we suggest for the environmental movement in the future to give it greater traction? I come to the conclusion that environmentalists would be well served to think about broadening their cultural appeal beyond their historically quite uh, limited um, purview and to bringing in uh, folks of different persuasions, ideological, political, or cultural. And I suggest some ways that that might be done.